Let's be 100% honest. AI is going to replace jobs. And some of those jobs are going to include software engineer. As an entry-level engineer, you need to start showing the behavior or the characteristics of an L4, L5 engineer, mid-level senior engineer, because if the only thing you're good for is doing these well-defined coding problems, you're actually not that valuable because AI will do that for you. In this video, I wanna focus on three areas where AI is not that effective, and therefore you should really focus on developing skills in these areas if you want that job security. The first area where artificial intelligence can't be easily applied is real-time communication. So AI is really effective at async communication, for example, sending an email or writing an update, but it's not very good at synchronous communication, especially if it's in person. Like imagine how crazy that would be if I'm talking to you and then all of a sudden I say, hold on, hold on, let me pull out my AI and figure out a good joke to say or a good response to your question. You would never do that. And because you can't just stop a conversation and pull out an AI, you have to get good at participating and driving meetings in the moment. My recommendation is to put yourself in slightly uncomfortable situations in a one-on-one -on -one meeting or when you're leading a team meeting. Learn how to think fast, observe other people's body language, and also modify your own in order to get the message across that you want to communicate. That's really critical for building relationships, which is the second area where AI won't have as much impact as it will on other parts of engineering. The idea here is that you wanna develop empathy for the person sitting across the table from you and understand what are their incentives, what motivates them, and then you figure out a way to work together that aligns both of your incentives. And the number one hack here, which is gonna sound really cheesy, is to lead with kindness. Figure out what the goals are of the people around you and figure out how you can proactively help them. And that is the number one way to build a really deep relationship. I'll share a concrete example here where I was on the receiving end of kindness, which is when I first joined Facebook or Meta back in 2017, I was on a pretty confusing team because we were working on a modified version of the Android open source project. So there was a really unique setup and onboarding flow that as a app developer, I found a little bit confusing and most people found confusing. There was one person on the team who joined a few months before me. So he had gone through the pain of understanding how do you develop code and land code in this new workflow. And so he actually had created his own personal onboarding doc, which he shared with me proactively because he saw me struggling. So, hey, like I found the normal docs pretty confusing. Here are some things I learned the hard way that can help you. And that was so amazing because it really did have a meaningful impact on helping me understand what to do, how to modify my workflow. And that person ended up becoming my co-founder. Because of this act of kindness, when I was onboarding, I was struggling, he helped me. It led to this really deep relationship and friendship in the workplace, outside the workplace. And now we're actually building a company called Taro together. If you're looking for an amazing community of engineers where you can practice this skill of building deep relationships, then check out jointaro.com. We have thousands of the top engineers in the country and in the world who all are actually kind and thoughtful and helpful to one another in the form of discussion forum and live events. And you can really learn how other engineers operate and get better at their job. The third area to AI proof your career is in system design. AI is really good at solving a well-defined problem. So if you tell it, hey, here's the language I want you to write in, input X and output Y, AI can do that pretty effectively, way faster than a human, and increasingly it'll get better and better at that task. On the other hand, system design is infinitely complex. There are literally an infinite number of possibilities of what technology, framework, language do you use, and what are the constraints of the problem? How many users do you wanna support? When do you wanna ship the product by? What are the trade-offs you're willing to make as you design this system? And also keep in mind that every company is going to have a unique tech stack. So they're gonna have their own set of tools, their own set of priorities, their own trade-offs that they want to make that is really hard to encode and tell to an AI agent. What that means for you as an engineer is you should figure out how you can embed more system level thinking, this trade-off thinking in your day-to-day -day work. So if you're given a more meaty technical task, think about the trade-offs, think about why you're approaching it this way or the other and have a discussion about it with other people on the team. When your team does project planning or when you're doing project planning, seek out work which has more ambiguity, more complexity, and open questions to answer because that's really where you're exercising the true muscle of an engineer, which is creativity and problem solving rather than just writing a bunch of code. And finally, get in the habit of writing a technical document and circulate it with the team, especially if you have a senior or staff level person on the team who you can interact with, they're gonna give you really valuable data or feedback about what you could have done better or how you can improve the design going forward. And that's the skill that will make you more and more valuable as an engineer. If you don't have the ability to create a design document at your workplace, you can manufacture that and invent it on your own. 
That's the beauty of software. Go build a side project. Go build an Android app or a web app or some backend you know, machine learning model. Build it, figure out what went wrong, and then that'll be how you build up this intuition uh, of system design and getting better at this skill. These are three areas where I think AI won't be that valuable. Real-time communication, building relationships, and designing complex systems. At the same time, that doesn't mean that we should be afraid of applying AI to other parts of our job where we could get a lot of leverage. If you want to learn a framework for how to effectively apply AI to your job, check out this video I'll leave somewhere here about how you can do exactly that. Let me know what other skills become more valuable as AI becomes more prominent. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.